This Monero Mateo video is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Safely store, send, receive, and trade your Monero on Cake Wallet on Android and iOS. Alrighty, welcome back. So, no lights tonight. It's a little bit late. So, I just wanted to get this out because I have some thoughts which have been steaming up in my mind. And I just want to get it out to you guys. Yes, there is a lot going on in the markets. <laughs> have you have you seen? <laughs> but it's crazy. Um, Luna, I guess, you know, did a total belly flop into the lake of fire and uh, wiped a lot of people out. Very sad. Um, and the whole crypto market, I guess, is undergoing a kind of reverberation as a result of that, as well as just a lot of macro things going on as well. You've got the Fed raising rates into a recession. You've got inflation taking off. So we're going into this stagflationary thing, which introduces a lot of uncertainty. Um, and you just have a lot of speculative stuff coming to a quick end. <laughs> and it's not just going on in crypto. I've been looking at some stocks in the NASDAQ in particular, which have just been decimated. Uh, Coin, uh, which is Coinbase, is down about 80%. Uh, Peloton, Netflix, and some other big stocks are down like 75%. It's crazy. I think Amazon is down 50%, 40 50% or something like this. So... Yeah, that's the thing. It happens fast. Um, we've known forever that this is just one big casino, which has no reality to it. But, you know, when the reality comes back, it comes back strong and quick. And that's what has happened. And for me, I I'm just a paranoid value investor. <laughs> I think my issue is that I listened to Peter Schiff too much in my early financial uh, life. And so, you know, I just figured buy gold and, you know, ready yourself for the end, right? But, you know, there was a big party that happened for quite a long time. People were dancing and having a good time. The punch bowl was being spiked by the Fed every other day with massive amounts of QE. And whenever they tried to take that punch bowl away, you know, people just started to fall over dead. <laughs> companies and uh, everything like that. I mean, zombie companies, I think, comprise of about 30 to 40 percent of the companies now on these major exchanges throughout uh, Europe and the United States, especially Japan. I mean, they've been basically a zombie co country forever, but... Zombie companies, if you don't know, are basically companies which can't survive unless they have a continuous streamline of low interest debt coming into the company. They're basically Ponzi's, which collapse at the moment of any rates being raised. But yeah, I mean, it's just been crazy. It's just been crazy. Um, there are a lot of things going into this downturn in the crypto market, a lot of technical stuff going on too. But um, I do want to express condolences to anyone who has lost a lot during the last few days. And, um, you know, this isn't going to be like an I told you so thing. I, you know, I've been telling you for a while, I think Monero is going to go hypernuclear. We're still waiting for that to happen, obviously. Um, and something to just put in perspective, like Monero has a market cap right now of about $2.5 billion, even after the drawdown. Before then, it was like, what? four or five billion dollars so in the grand scheme of things in my opinion nothing has really happened now you may not be feeling that way <laughs> when you look at your portfolio but that's because you me and our little community here comprise a very tight-knit small group of people that nobody knows about <laughs> let's just be real um and so for us this seems like a big deal but in the grand scheme of things based on where i think and where you probably think this is all going based on the fundamentals um, that we talked about in the last video and we've talked about ever since the beginning of the channel and our 120 something videos. Um, this is nothing. This is peanuts. This is like Bitcoin going through Mount Gox back in 2013. I mean, basically nothing has happened. So, um, I'm not worried about this. The fundamentals are getting stronger than ever. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. But if you can, guys, just say a prayer for all those who like got completely wiped out. Um, because I have seen a lot of just you know nightmare fuel stories on Twitter of people who are like, "Yeah, I just lost 130k. Yeah, my friends loaned me all their money because I told them, "Hey, I I found the best freaking thing ever, which I guess is Luna, <laughs> and it's now down like I think 99. percent I think it's dead. 
I think it's totally dead. And before the plunge, I think it had a market cap of about $50 billion, which is insane. So uh, it's just amazing what's happening out there. But that just emphasizes, guys, um, the importance of, I think, putting the bulk of your portfolio, and I'm not getting financial advice to you, but, um, you know, invest in reality, invest in truth, not just financially, but you know, in your life, in your relationships, in, uh, you know, how you approach the world. You're going to build a foundation on a rock that when the storm comes, can't easily knock it down, you know, and so that is worthy to note. So let's just get into it, guys. Let's just get into it. A lot of lessons being learned out there for our compatriots in the cryptosphere. And, you know, it's kind of sad because... The first thing I want to pull up here, just to sort of give more empathy to the people who have lost their lives, like I understand, uh, wages have been consistently been uh, decimated. Like the real wages, according to Ms. Shedlock here, they've been negative for 13 out of the last 15 months. So people's incomes are being decimated by inflation. Um, I think housing is about to turn over. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about that in this video, but I think there is some good information out there that says that the housing market has topped. Uh, we'll see though, not making predictions, but I mean, you just have a lot of people out there who are struggling and they look at the crypto sphere as a way out. And you have a lot of people who are taking advantage of the secular despair, which is exacerbated by the fact that very few people have faith anymore in Christ. And maybe they do, um, you know, go to church every Sunday, but they really don't have that connection. Um, in because a lot of these uh, churches have been kind of whitewashed and, you know, they've made uh, compromises with modernity. And so when people go to these churches, they're more like social functions. And so uh, even like a lot of the so-called uh, Christians out there, I, I don't know how much of a connection they really have with Christ. Um, but there are a lot of people out there who are just kind of like in this uh, postmodern void of meaninglessness. And they are struggling with inflation. They're struggling with housing being unaffordable. They're struggling with, uh, you know, so many things that I, I couldn't even tell you the, f the fullness of if I had like 10 hours here. But they look to crypto and they look to these people who promised them some kind of salvific uh, uh, conclusion if they get into this stuff. Like they buy Bitcoin not only are they going to become rich, but the world's going to be saved from, you know, central bank demonic overlords and, uh, you know, Bill Gates or whatever. Like, you know, they promise so much. And it, it, the crypto sphere, as we've talked about on this channel, has taken on like a religious fervor. And this, I think, has been to the detriment of a lot of people. And people will rationalize so many things when they get into things uh, like not only Luna and Dogecoin or whatever, but Bitcoin, I think, as well. Um, a lot of what has led to this problem has been a religious uh, orient to Bitcoin saving the world. And we have heard this from the likes of Michael Saylor and Jack Dorsey and others. And I think this is totally irresponsible, and it really takes advantage of this secular despair, which is now prominent in our uh, collapse in Christian society. And this is so bad. And not only is it this religious meme culture, but it's also the store of value philosophy, which has sort of permeated the sphere. And I, I struggle with looking at Monero right now as a store of value. Forget about Bitcoin and Ethereum. I mean, these are absolutely not stores of value, but people have that philosophical orient towards these cryptos. And I mean, do you need any more evidence that it's not so much a store of value <laughs> after what we just saw? Um, no, I mean, they're going through adoption phases. Excuse me. Um, they haven't really proven themselves as medium of exchanges. And Sorry, I just had Chick-fil-A. <laughs> oh, man, I love that. Spicy Deluxe. But um, no, it's it's not proven itself to be a store of value. Now, people will speculate. They'll say, hey, it'll be a store of value once it's adopted. Okay, well, then make the claim that it's going to be a store of value in the future. Don't say that it's a store of value now, <laughs> okay? Because these things exist on 
an entire Pacific Ocean of assumptions. The cryptography is sound. Um, you know, there's going to be money consistently going into this stuff from institutional investors. There's going to be uh, hyper Bitcoinization. Um, uh, you know, they're going to get the Lightning Network going and somehow make this fungible and make it so that it can be a medium of exchange, which solidifies its position as a store of value. Like, there's so many assumptions I could even go on. But, <laughs> oh, and it's, by the way, going to beat out the competition from the 19,000 other different cryptocurrencies, which are trying to take that position as being the primary store of value, right? And it's going to be a better store of value than gold, right? And so, just again, it goes on. People have been honestly psyoped and manipulated and deceived in every which way in this totally degenerate marketplace. Um, it's become like a cesspit for, uh, you know, pride. Oh, I have the best Bitcoin, have fun staying poor and all this stuff. Uh, greed, uh, you know, lust. I mean, <laughs> look at Cum Rocket. Look at some of these adult entertainment coins which are now coming out. I mean, it's just so nasty what this space has turned into. The original use case of crypto was to be a decentralized private store uh, not store, excuse me, medium exchange. That's what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be digital cash. That's it. That was the fundamental value proposition. Look at Satoshi's white paper, a peer-to-peer -peer digital cash system. That was the whole point. And it's turned into something completely foreign to that, in my opinion. And the fact that Monero is sitting here at a $2.5 billion market cap in a crypto market, which is still worth even after this drawdown, about a trillion dollars, just goes to show you, I think, the loss perspective that the entire crypto community has had. And let me get to something here, which I think further evidences this. Now, I don't want to like give it into despair of any type or like doom out on you guys. That's not the point of this. I want to give you guys optimism and hope. Um, not necessarily in the worldly, of course. I've, we've talked about that. Don't get too carried away with that. Um, make sure. Hold on. Where did I put it? Do, 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 do. No, that's not what I'm looking for. I may have to pull it up. Oh, here we go. So this is from Coinbase. Okay. So this is very relevant. Look, so people were freaking out about this disclosure from Coinbase. New disclosure in today's coin, uh, 10Q. In the event of bankruptcy, customers should be treated as our general unsecured creditors. So basically the idea is if uh, Coinbase goes bankrupt, then they're going to do a kind of bail-in where they go after their customers' deposits and they use that to pay off the secured creditors, right? So um, that's noteworthy, absolutely. I, I don't think that's news to anyone who watches this channel. I mean, we've been harping forever to take your... Monero off the exchanges. And in fact, that's you know something which is prominent in the Monero community. Uh, I think Doug says that more than anybody. But the thing is, um, what's interesting here is it says in the first sentence, which isn't highlighted, ironically enough, as of March 31st, 2022, we held $256 billion in custodial fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies on the behalf of customers. So this company has a market cap right now of about $15 billion, okay? And they've got $256 billion under custody. And a lot of this is crypto stuff. So it makes me think that <laughs> not only have people lost that this stuff is supposed to be private, decentralized, peer-to-peer -peer cash, uh, which is out of the hands of third parties and has nothing to do with third parties like banks, like governments, etc. But like... They've lost the understanding that if you don't own your crypto uh, or if you don't own your keys, you don't own your crypto. I mean, people aren't even on the level where this stuff is a tool for financial self-sovereignty anymore, <laughs> much less making payments just between you and somebody else and have nobody know about it or get involved. Um, so with that going on, and somebody else, I think, had made a comment about 401ks and about uh, pensions and about trusts and about all these other, um, you know, financial entities which custody crypto on the behalf of their clients. I mean, we really are seeing the buildup and establishment without any regulatory initiative necessarily of a KYC 
custodial-based crypto system. And this has been one of the biggest fears of uh, people in Monero and, you know, OG people in crypto is that this would be the direction things go. Because we looked at what happened to Russia in regards to the adoption of Bitcoin. I mean, everything is totally KYC custodied over there. And, you know, the Bitcoin bros got excited about this. They're like, well, the attendees are coming, guys. Putin, our guy, just adopted uh, Bitcoin. Wow, isn't he amazing? Oh, wait, he just uh, invaded Ukraine. Now we hate him. So, yeah, you got some bipolar stuff going on there. But, I mean, it's totally 1984 over there, over in Russia, if you even want to get involved with crypto. But this is happening without any kind of regulatory initiative. But with everything going on now, with stable coins, with the crypto crash, and I think I read about $1.7 trillion of market cap has been wiped out from crypto. And I think I read another statistic that about $1.3 trillion was wiped out of U.S. House, household wealth um, uh, in the 08 financial crisis. So this is like a serious um, situation. I mean, it could be a... This could have systemic implications. We'll see. Maybe more stimmies on the way. But the thing is, um, this, <laughs> this could make it so that regulation is a certainty. Now, we had commented on this channel for quite a long time about Canada, the United States, Russia, Europe, introducing slowly but surely more regulations uh, and oversight on, into crypto. I mean, this has been a long time coming. We've been looking at the FBI task force, which are being made. We've been looking at, uh, you know, what they did in Canada during the Freedom Convoy protests and the crackdowns on people's bank accounts over there, them tracking crypto and all that stuff, the blacklisting of addresses. I mean, we've been seeing this slowly but surely come. This is probably going to move that to the next phase of things. But the thing is, I don't even think most people care. I don't know if most people care. And if they do, I can't imagine they're going to want to deal with all of the overhead concerns that you're going to have to have to deal with, with Bitcoin and Ethereum and a lot of these other public blockchain cryptos, right? Because a lot of the people out there who take crypto, they know about Monero. And if they don't, uh, they're very easy to onboard. If they're on board with crypto, um, they're not that hard to turn on to Monero and sell, in my experience. Now, of course, I'm me. <laughs> and I talk about this stuff all the time. And um, it's not hard for me to turn people onto this stuff. And it, it, given how awesome it is, it shouldn't be that hard for you either. But the thing is, um, <laughs> I'm thinking like, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I think that uh, more people are going to want to take this stuff, right? I think more people are going to want to use this stuff, and they're not going to want to use uh, Bitcoin to be tracked and traced. There are other questions about that. I think I'm starting to wander here, but let's um, let's go to some other news articles. Um, I was talking with somebody today um, who just recently got onboarded to Monero. Um, he didn't have a Monero wallet. I'm guessing he's digging it. We'll see. But um, I told him a word of advice. I said, if you want to not worry as much as I think everybody else is worrying here in this crypto market um, about you know the loss of your um, portfolio and the destruction of your wealth, put, put your wealth into something which has a real world unique use case okay because that's going to make the demand for it somewhat inelastic that's going to make it so that people consistently want to get this stuff so that they can fulfill the function that this thing allows you to do and monero has that unique use case but i evidenced that claim by showing him this okay so this is a good barometer of if a crypto has solid use case is the transaction volumes, especially the transaction volumes regarding something which has real world economic use, which are gift cards, right? You're actually participating in the economy with this stuff. So we ran the numbers. This is from coincards.com. Uh, here's a breakdown of cryptos being used as percentages in April 2022. So this is the most recent data. Uh, Bitcoin, 35.3%. Ethereum, 20.5%. 
Monero, 24.5%. So it's moving up there, guys. I mean, it's been moving up for quite a while incrementally. It's becoming more popular. That's worthy to note. Um, Monero here is at 12 in Canada. <laughs> you Canadians need to like get onto Monero ASAP. I mean, seriously, what more do you need to see? <laughs> I mean, come on. You guys are like ground zero for financial authoritarianism here in the West. Please go get yourself some Monero. I don't know if there's some sort of like, you know, regulatory thing going on with you guys in the exchanges and they're making it difficult for you guys to get this stuff. But yeah, you guys need to start to use that more often. Come on. Uh, and then the United States, Monero is number one by far at 63%. So yeah, it's being used a lot. And that's something interesting to note because Monero has a market cap, again, of like $2.5 billion. Bitcoin has a market cap of about $500 billion. And look how much Monero is being used, even though, um, you know, Bitcoin has a lot more liquidity and it's being adopted by institutions, blah, blah, blah. This is why you don't want to look at market cap. This is why what's going on in the market has no bearing on my faith in this crypto being successful because it is successful and it's becoming ever more successful, right? And you can't just judge the success of a crypto off how much demand a completely toxicified marketplace relegates to it. So you look at transaction volumes. You look at the things we looked at in the last video, the developments going on with decentralized ways that this stuff could be attained uh, without having to go on exchanges. Um, look at the mining algorithm updates, P2P pools. Look at, um, uh, she, we've talked about so much in regards to it. Um, you know, the privacy upgrades, they're upgrading how many rings are involved. So there's going to be more updates going on with Monero, which is going to make it the top dog for medium of exchange, which means it's going to be the top dog for store of value if you want to deem any crypto to be a store of value in that context. Now, I still think gold and silver are the ways to go. And we've been telling you guys that since day one, and I think we've been totally vindicated on that. But um, And some I want to point out, I made a tweet about this, but I think that... The Monero community is much more honest than most communities out there um, because you see in the Bitcoin community, I don't know about the Ethereum community, I'm not involved in that, but I do see it a lot in the Bitcoin community where it's like, why do you need gold? You have digital gold right here. Gold is of the past. It's a relic. I mean, they sound like uh, Ben Bernanke, right? It's an old relic. Nobody has any use for it. Um, you know, just buy cash, uh, buy our Bitcoin, right? Hodl it. It's better than gold. You can take it with you and they make the arguments, right? Except that, you know, it's not private. It's not fungible like gold, right? We can go into all that. But the people in Monero are much more honest, even though they have something which could be, in my opinion, more akin to digital gold. You don't really hear that too much in the Monero community. You hear, yeah, Monero is an awesome store or excuse me, an awesome medium exchange. And yeah, I still have gold. I like gold. I like silver. These are very undervalued uh, metals. I think there's manipulation going on. Me personally, I think that. I don't know what the Monero community thinks. And I think that um, I would rather have that than any crypto if I'm going to have a store of value. Now, definitions abound to store of value. Again, I'm going to make a video on that. I've been telling you guys that for like a year now. <laughs> but um, yes, I think the Monero community, I th right now, maybe it's just because we don't have too many grifters in the space, uh, if any at all. And it's more uh, because there's not much profit in this space, or there hasn't been really. It's been kind of like moving sideways for the last couple of years. It's, uh, you know, it, it attracts the more intellectually curious um, type. You know, it attracts the people who are more interested in the fundamental workings of things and people who are more independently minded and don't move with herds, I guess you could say. Um, I think that's the kind of people that we attract here. Anyways, and I think that's one of the reasons why the channel hasn't really grown that much. Other than the obvious things, which we have a lot of Christian takes, people don't like that. You know, I kind of have this weird thing where it's like, I don't fit into any particular community. <laughs> I'm just kind of like my own YouTuber bro, um, just out here, because... Yeah, the views have fallen off a little bit because of the decline 
in the market. And so that's shaking out a lot of the people who I think came to the channel just to get that hopium that this stuff is going to go hypernuclear. They're going to be rich and cashed out to do whatever. But um, not that we don't think it's going to go hypernuclear. I still think that's going to happen. The fundamentals, I think, show that pretty clearly. But we'll see. Um, but I think that, you know, we just occupy an interesting niche. We've heard that for a long time. But we really do have a tight community here. And I do talk with a lot of you guys, and I love communicating with you guys. And I think it's uh, cool the type that we do attract here because... You know, to attract Ortho Bros and Monero Bros to one place, um, I think there is an astounding amount of good that can come from this channel. It can come from us um, just talking with some of you guys and just, you know, seeing that spirit within you um, from this channel. Uh, if we can get, like, churches onto this stuff, if we can get our friends and family to understand the value of this stuff and we could build these parallel economies between each other, Man, I think that um, we can build something truly special and we could really kind of, um, you know, not to blaspheme or anything like that, but kind of build like an arc, you know, because it's important not just to have, uh, you know, precious metals and, uh, you know, your storable foods, PatriotSupplyInfoWars.com, right? It, it's important to have networks. It's important to have life that flows through the relationships that people have with each other. I mean, that's what life is, and that's how, you know, we flourish, and that's how we grow. I think it's important that we connect with the right people who are on the same wavelength that we are, because a lot of the people who tune into this channel, they have a lot to provide. They're smart, they're industrious, and they, I think, are more intelligent than your average person. Joe out there. I mean, I don't think I have to tell you guys that. I'm not trying to be prideful, but I think it's true. And I think that if we link up together and we work together during the hard times, which I think are coming, I think we have a much better possibility to preserve a lot of good, which could help rebuild the civilization that is to come. So anyways, not to you know ramble on too much about that. I ramble a lot. It's late. I've had so much caffeine today, it's ridiculous. Let's talk about some more bullish things going on with Monero. Um, yeah, we don't need to talk about that. I was listening to Peter Schiff, <laughs> and it's interesting. Peter was talking about a week ago how um, if all the speculators get shaken out, first off, am I recording? If all the speculators get shaken out of uh, Bitcoin, then the true value of Bitcoin would be like $1,000 because that would be equivalent to the value that the true believers have in it. It's not just speculators, not just institutions that are buying the stuff in order to you know, get in on the trade, right? It's the hardcore libertarian types. He says that it would be like 1000 bucks. In my honest opinion, I think the price would be closer to zero. <laughs> I think it would be closer to zero because I think the hardcore OG crypto bros who were in the space back in like 09, 10, they have moved over to Monero. They've moved over to the privacy sphere. Um, and I think that's evidence with the likes of Jeff Berwick. And I think that's evidence with others. Um, I think the ethos is moving into Monero and the privacy sphere from Bitcoin. Now, you do have a lot of people in Monero who I think hold Bitcoin for a number of reasons. One, because they've been psyoped into the store of value thing, just like a lot of other people. But two, they have some faith and hope that the Bitcoin code can be changed in order to make it more fungible, make it more private. I don't really have too much faith in that. I, I think that's unreasonable, especially because you have so many people who have been psyched into the store of value thing, and they believe that if you do change the code, then that's going to mess with the store of value proposition, in which case, why don't you just go to gold or go to Monero, something which is already private. There's going to be less you know, transition risk if you just go to Monero than if you wait on the Bitcoin blockchain and then move on over to private um, you know, protocols in that realm. So I think those are just some... Uh, copes, in my opinion, but I think a lot of that OG energy has moved over to Monero. But let's listen to Peter Schiff because he makes a good point here that I've been harping on for about a year, and this is one of the main things, which is part of our, you know, super hyper mega bullish master thesis as to why Monero is going to uh, become ever more valuable, and that has to do with price controls, which are reactionary policy put in by politicians that are afraid of the backlash from inflationary forces, 
And we're actually seeing a lot of that in different parts of the world now. I saw some videos out of Sri Lanka that looked pretty crazy. But, um, yeah, you have inflation. You've got politicians worried about losing elections because of inflation. People are upset. Then they institute price controls. And then price controls lead to shortages. Shortages lead to black markets. And the black markets provide that price discovery mechanism, which the regulated market no longer provides. And then people go to the black markets in order to buy the goods and services which are being rationed for the fair market value. So I think that is what's going to be happening. And of course, with Monero taking over the dark web marketplaces, taking over the black market, and as we move into the cashless society, um, it's just going to have that much more of a value proposition. And even though the market's doing what it's doing, you do have this stuff going on right now, which is becoming ever more of an issue. So this is the next segment of this video that I want to get to. This is important. So listen to Schiff member Lisa Cook who was just appointed with her guidance what are they going to do they are going to print money they're going to focus on the economy jobs they're going to say jobs are more important than inflation the economy is more important we can't have a recession we can't have unemployment we can't just die on this false altar of inflation fighting in fact what will they do they will go back to stimulating the economy and how will they fight inflation they'll leave that up to congress with price controls it's all coming. That's why I'm also been saying that shortages, you think we got shortages now, where do you see how bad these shortages are? I was just reading about how it's very hard to get baby formula. The markets are completely out of baby formula. Now, I guess for a lot of women, I guess they'd have to start breastfeeding. I mean, that's one positive thing, although maybe some of these women can't breastfeed at this point and they need the formula. But I mean, we're going to have widespread shortages of everything if we end up with price controls. But that is definitely the direction that we're going in. And I think those price controls can be here before the 2024 election. Because I, Yeah, so I think more people are going to wake up to there being price controls more people are going to front run the inflation, which obviously the Fed has no handle over. I mean, the Fed is going to raise rates 1%, have literally like co like comet level strikes happen on the stock market, the bond market, the crypto market, etc. over 1% and somehow they're going to tame 10% CPI inflation. 10% CPI lie inflation. <laughs> We've talked about how the CPI is a total lie. I mean, inflation is more like 25%. Um, it's actually been over 15, 20%, I think for a number of years now, but now it's starting to get, uh, visibly uh, egregious. So, um, yeah, that's going to not happen. Inflation is going to get even worse. The Fed's going to have to come up with some excuse to lower rates again, though, because the thing is the government gets about 15% of their revenues from capital gains taxes. And if stocks are going down, crypto is going down and all that stuff is happening, where are they going to get that additional revenue? And where are the buyers? Because global central banks are increasing uh, their rates, which means they're going to have the same problem. And so there's going to be a lot of governments whose central banks have not necessarily began to taper their balance sheet. They haven't even start. They haven't even stopped QE. All they've done is they've, uh, you know, stopped a little bit and they've increased rates or they've let rates increase. Um, they're going to have to buy more of the debt, which is being issued by the government, assuming that the spending stays the same. And the spending is going to have to stay the same if they don't want to plunge the economies into a recession because government spending comprises a lot of the GDP for these, well, for these economies, especially here in the West. And so they're going to have to figure out uh, how to fund that tax gap with the loss of the capital gains, and especially because a lot of people are going to be taking losses, which are deductions, and that lowers their tax bills, and that means less receipts going into the government. So they're going to have to figure out something, um, or they just, you know, fill that gap with quantitative easing, which makes inflation worse. So the higher rates go, uh, the less money that Congress takes in with taxes, because that leads to recessionary headwinds and then the fed has to make up the difference which leads to more inflation which means they have to raise rates even more to counter that purportedly that's their narrative right so i don't know what they do right now it's a super tough spot either way the politicians are gonna have to look like they're doing something and so that means they're gonna do price controls and that means everything that we just talked about which is bullish monero so that's worthy to know and one extra added piece of evidence to this is pelosi um 
I guess, introduced a bill or somebody introduced a bill that allowed the president to make gas prices illegal. So it's ridiculous. That'll lead to major shortages. The history is super clear on that, but that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. So get ready for that. And frankly, I think I might just have to figure out how to use the dark web. (laughs) I may have to become Jose Sanchez. I may have to be on the dark web by by my baby formula, bro. I mean, it could be. That's what we have to do. Because, um, yeah, there are going to be shortages in a lot of stuff. This is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. And I was talking to somebody recently. They couldn't find baby formula. But you know what's interesting is that a black market seems to be forming for baby formula. And from what I've read, uh, there's been a black market for baby formula, but there's a boom now going on in the black market for baby formula because of apparently a lot of red tape, which has uh, constrained the production distribution of baby formula here in the States. Uh, apparently, there's not too much of a shortage in Europe because they're a little bit looser with the restrictions, But um, which is hard to imagine. I mean, Europe's like basically a communist Soviet uh, block over there. I mean, the fact that we have worse regulations than they do in something is pretty remarkable. But yeah, um, that's something to note. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? By the way, check out this uh, publication, The Monero Moon by John Foss. I really like the information on here. There's a lot of stuff that I just am not updated on going on here. So thank you, John. I appreciate Dotman. Uh, is there anything else I really want to talk about? I mean, we could talk about more problems with Bitcoin, but yeah, I feel like you guys have been worn out about that. We all know. Right? We all know. Let's check out the prices of things. Let's see what's going on. Ba-ba-da-ba-doo. So Bitcoin's recovering back to that resistance level, it looks like, at about 29 to 30K. Threw him back at 2K. I imagine that's resistance there. Where's our lovely Cardano? <laughs> Did I say Cardano? No, I, I'm out of that. I'm out of my Cardano. Guys, hypothetically, if you want to... Some of you guys have asked about my portfolio. Let me just tell you something. Hypothetically... Um, I've gotten out of just about every other crypto except Monero. Um, and I have consolidated my position in it because I don't know if you guys saw my tweet, but I said that I think it could be a good idea. And this is not tax advice or anything like that, but it might be a good idea to lock in some losses on the public blockchain cryptos that you've been able to ride out. Um, but maybe didn't sell in time, right? Um, maybe you have some losses you could lock in in order to take against your gains that you may have had earlier in the year, uh, or you could lock in some losses up to 3K and knock that off your personal return for this year. Um, and then you could take that basis, maybe, hypothetically, and move it into private cryptos because with all the regulations coming down with what we just talked about, I think the private sphere is going to have its day to shine. I think that is coming. And as we talked about, one of the benefits of getting Mooch's gains in private cryptos is that nobody knows about it. Nobody knows how much money you have in your wallet. Uh, it's not on some Blocknet Explorer being you know, viewed by the eye of Sauron and the governors. Uh, you got it right there in your stealth address wallet. So nobody knows it even exists. And honestly, there are some cryptos that I thought were attractive. I had watched Money Today show a lot. He had some good things to say about Algorand. He had some good things to say about Quant. And so I had like small positions in those, but honestly, I just got out of those and uh, they hypothetically went into Monero. (laughs) So, I mean, I just feel much better um, with the hypothetical of my funds being there and being non-existent and just being totally off the grid. You know what I mean? Like, even I almost forget that I could hypothetically have Monero <laughs> with me having Monero. I mean, it's it's just a relief, man. I don't like my money being surveilled. I mean, it's just something about that which spooks me. Anyways, that's what's going on. Monero is at rank 31 where it has been. It's at $2.5 billion market cap. 140 bucks, 140 books. Uh, Terra USD down 80% on the week. That is brutal, dude. It's freaking brutal. Look at these declines, dude. 
That is unbelievable. Whoa. Uh, and if you guys are curious, if you guys are curious, I got a little Q coin. I got a little Q coin. And I don't know if you guys recall, but I think I told you that Q coin had some pretty good fundamentals to it like a year ago, back when I started the channel. And that was when it was like in the hundreds for the rank. Um, I didn't harp on it because obviously it's a Monero channel, but um, given Binance and its sketchy business practices, if you want to call them that, they're basically a cartel as far as I'm concerned. Um, sort of, like Binance coin was at a hundred billion dollars. <laughs> um, you know, I think last year and Qcoin is at like, you know, $800 million. And so, yeah, now it's at a billion bucks. It's a great exchange. I mean, you can get all your favorite private cryptos there. You can get your Monero there, which is fantastic. And as far as I'm concerned, they don't do any weird manipulative stuff. So I like Qcoin. Yeah, it's cool. What else is going on? Engine coin. Interesting. That's it. That's it. I have nothing else to say to you people. I'm out of here. Much love. Hope that you guys are doing well, seriously. I mean, I have seen, like, some of these channels. They have, like, these suit uh, self-deletion hotlines out there. Guys, um, don't worry too much about the material, okay? Uh, I can tell you with some confidence that it's not going to get too much better from here, which is why I've been telling you guys forever, like, get right with Christ, uh, find an Orthodox church, and really start your repenting because... Um, and I'm not saying that the black pill. I'm just I'm trying to give you actionable advice as to how to find more peace in what's going on, because uh, what's going on can unhinge a lot of people. Seriously, so find that peace, uh, live with Christ, and it, will, it everything will be fine. Everything will be okay. I promise. So with that being said, I'm gonna have a tale. I hope that you guys enjoyed this little late night chat. Um, check out the donation. Address is below for our favorite private cryptos. If you want to do like a private super chat, you can send me some Monero, Pirate Chain, whatever. Send me a Proton Mail message or send something through the Pirate Chain message app. Um, and we could do a little shout out for you. Check out the social media links. And that is it. We'll be back soon. God bless you guys. Bye bye.